yet another funky daily Bible commentation. Today we dive into Esther chapter 3. So here uh, we have King Azarius' feast. In the third year of King Azarius' reign, he hosts a lavish feast with nobles, princes, and powerful figures of Persia and Media. The banquet and its opulence lasted for 180 days. Feast for all. After these 180 days of feasting for the elite are over, the king throws a second feast. This one is for everyone present in Sushkan Palace, both great and small. It's a grand celebration held for seven days in the palace's garden courtyard, adorned with splendid hangings and lavish furnishings. And three, the Vastil's Feast for Women. Concurrently, Queen Vashti arranges a feast for the women in the royal house. 4. Vashti's Defiance. On the seventh day, when the king is merry with wine, he commands his chamberlains to bring Queen Vashti before him, wearing her royal crown to display her beauty to all the people and the princess as a bit of a prostitute. However, Queen Vashti refuses to obey the king's command. Her refusal infuriates the king, and he becomes very angry. Consultation with Wise Men. King uh, Assyrius's consults his wise men and princes to decide how to respond to Vashti's defiance. They fear that her actions will be precedent for disobedience among the women in the kingdom, which will lead to contempt and wrath towards their husbands. Number six, advice from uh, Macumen. Macumen is one of the king's princes, suggests that Vashti's actions have not only wronged the king, but will also influence women throughout the empire. To prevent this, he advises the king to issue a decree that Vashti can never come before him again. The king should give her royal estate to another woman who is more obedient. And number seven, king, the king's approval. King Azurius's and his princes find Macumun's advice suitable. They decide to send out letters to all the king's providences, following their respective languages to establish their decree. The decree pr proclaims that every man should rule his own house, maintain order and respect among wives toward their husbands. This chapter thus sets the stage for the story of Esther, showing the king's authority and the consequences of Ashti's defiance. In the beginning of the series, the events leading to the, the selection of Esther as the new queen and the unfolding of the significant narrative in the book of Esther. So let us move into the reading of Esther in the Greek, chapter 3. In the KJB, verse 1, Now as it came to pass the days of Azarius, this is Azarius who reigned from India even until Ethiopia, over 170 and 20 provinces, that in those days when the king Azarius sat on the throne of his kingdom, which was in Susan, the palace, in the third year of his reign, he made a feast unto all the princes and his servants, the power of Persia, Media, and nobles and princes and the provinces being before him. Verse 4, when he shewed the riches of the glorious kingdom and the honor of his excellent majesty many days, even a hundred and four score days. And when the days were expired, the king made a feast unto all the people that were present in Shusan Palace, both unto great and small, seven days and in the court of the garden of the king's palace, where white, uh, green, and blue hangings fastened with cords of fine linen, and purple to silver rings and pillars of marble. The beds were of gold and silver, upon a pavement of red and blue and white and black marble, and they gave them drink in vessels of gold, the vessels being diverse from one another, and royal wine in abundance, according to the state of the king. And the drinking was according to the law. None did compel, for so the king had appointed to all the officers of his house that they should do according to every man's pleasure. Also Vashti, the queen, made a feast for the women in the royal house, which belonged to King Azurius's. Verse 10, And on the seventh day, when the heart of the king was merry with wine, and commanded uh, Mahuman, Bistha, Harbona, Bigtha, Agatha, Zethar, Carcas, and the seven chamberlains that were served in the presence of Azurius the king, to bring Vashti the queen before the king and the crown royal, to shew the people and his princess her beauty, for she was fair to look upon. But the queen Vashti refused to come to the king's commandment by his chamberlains. Therefore... <coughs> Was the king very wroth, and his anger burned in him? Then the king sent to the wise men which knew the times, for so was the king's manner towards all in law and judgment. And next unto him, uh, Karshina, Shethar, Amatha, Tashish, Meres, uh, Marsina, Mamakan, the seven princes of Persia and Media, which saw the king's face, and which sat the first of the kingdom." 
What shall we do unto the queen Vashti according to the law, because she has not performed the commandment of the king Azarius of the chamberlains? Verse 16. And Mamakan answered before the king and all the princes, Vashti, the queen hath not done wrong to the king only, but also to the princes and to all the people in the providences the king Azarius's. For the deed of the queen shall come abroad unto all women, so that they shall despise their husbands in the eyes when they shall be reported. The king Azurius commanded Vashti the queen to be brought before him, but she came not. Likewise shall ladies of Persia and Media say till this day unto all the king's princes, which have heard of the dead of the queen, thus shall there arise too much contempt and wrath. If it pleases the king, if there are royal commandment before him, uh, from him, and let it be written among the laws of the Persians and the Medes, that it may not be altered, that Vashti come no more before the king Azarius, and let the king give her royal estate unto another that is better than she. And when the king's decree and shall make shall be published throughout all the empire, for it is great. All the wives shall give to their husbands honor, both great and small. And the saying pleased to the king and the princes, and the king did according to the word of Mamakan. Verse 22, for he sent letters into all king's providences, and to every province according to the written writing thereof, and to every people after their language, that every man should bear rule in his own house, and that it should be published according to the language of every people. Let us move into prayer. Heavenly Father, as we delve into the story of Macedonius and the intrigue of the king's court, we are reminded of the intricate ways. Oh, sorry, my apologies. Heavenly Father, as we reflect on the ancient story of Queen Vashti and the decree of King Azurius, we are reminded of the importance of the wisdom and respect within the uh, dynamics and leadership uh, and relationships, Father. In these verses, we see how a feast led to a request, and the queen's refusal led to a decree that extended far beyond the palace walls. Lord Yeshua HaMashiach, we pray for the wisdom in our actions, especially in the moments with power and authority at, are at play. Help us to act with discernment and fairness, considering the consequences of the decisions of those around us. The decree of King Azurius to replace Queen Vashti of her refusal is a reminder of the influence leaders have on their people. We pray for leaders in our world today, including Canada, United States, the world, Father, asking that they exercise their authority with justice and care, always considering, considering the well-being of those that they lead, including China. We also pray for our relationships, Lord. May we all uh, always respect and cherish one another and Israel, Lord, whether in our families and communities. Help us to build trust and understanding, valuing each person's unique qualities and contributions. In the face of controversy and decision-making, Lord, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, may we seek the counsel and wisdom from those who understand law and judgment. As the story unfolds, let us remember the significance of our actions and the impact they have on others. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, we pray. Amen and amen. This is a song based off of today's reading uh, in uh, Esther chapter 3. It's titled, In Times of Change. Verse 1. In the days of Azarius, a king so great, from India to Ethiopia, over many a state, on his throne in Shashtan the palace gleam, a feast of, for all his nobles like a splendid dream. Lord, in the times of change, we seek your grace. In the shifting seasons, we'll seek your face. When life's chapters turn and rearrange, we trust in you, our God, in times of change. With kingly majesty and treasures untold, Azurius is to display his wealth and gold. Seven days of grandeur in his palace court, with beds of silver and pavements of every sort. Lord, in times of change, we seek your grace, and the shifting seasons will seek your face. When life's chapters turn and rearrange, we trust in you, our God, in times of change. Vashti the queen, so fair to see, but when the king called her, she chose to flee. Her refusal caused anger and for the king's command. Now the kingdom in turmoil, like shifting sand. Lord, in times of change, we seek your grace. In shifting seasons, we seek your face. For when life's chapters turn and rearrange, we trust in you, our God, in times of change. In times of change, we'll seek your way, for in your wisdom, we'll never sway. For kingdoms rise and fall in every range. We'll stand in faith, unswayed in times of change. Lord, in times of change, we seek your grace. In shifting seasons, we'll seek your face. For when life's chapters turn and rearrange, we seek in you, our God, in times of change. Shalom and shalom until next time. May God keep you and bless you. Bye for now.